everybody. How are you doing today? We're going to have another lesson here. And hopefully my voice won't run out. But uh, that allergy season comes along. And yeah, sometimes I lose my voice. So anyway, I hope you're having a good day. hope the weather's cooperating where you are. And you're able to make the best of it. And as always, I encourage you to do something for God today. It may be just as simple as just sharing this message or maybe posting some Bible verses or some Bible thoughts uh, on, on your Facebook page. I mean, you, you can start reaching people that way. And you, who knows, you might touch a soul somewhere that might respond and seek to serve our God. All right, the title of the lesson day is, What is in it for me? Remember back years ago, they had a, a movie called Field of Dreams where this Iowa farmer, um, he, he basically, through hearing voices, he decided, well, he, uh, he built a baseball field in his, uh, in his field. And, of course, people ridiculed him, made fun of him, says, you can't make any money that way. And anyway, events happened. It was, it was a nice little story. Uh, and, and then, of course, um, as we as we go along we find out that he eventually after seeing all these things he asked the question well what's in it for me i mean and, and people are that way i mean people might do something but what's in it for me and we know even god asks us to do things but really our response and and if we're going to be honest with ourselves well what's in it for me see some of us remember in times past when that somebody needed to raise money, well, what did they do? Well, sometimes they just went around and said, okay, here's the need, and so can you give me some money? And so people would give a, a, a quarter, they'd give a dollar, they, they'd give maybe five dollars, and, and maybe that would be it. But then uh, all of a sudden we started taking initiative from what the schools were doing. Schools were raising money, so what did they do? They sent their students out trying to get magazine subscriptions. They sent their students to, to sell candles or, or some other trinkets or, or, or nuts and candy. Uh, oh, yeah, the candy was great. I mean, a dollar, you get a whole candy bar. And that was really neat. And then other people started having fundraisers. But instead of just putting out a bucket and saying, hey, drop your money in here, what'd they do? Well, they had an incentive. See, they, they would put up something for a raffle. And so you could go along and someone say, I need some money. And you might give them maybe a dollar or two. But if you'll buy a $5 raffle ticket, I mean, then you might win this prize, whatever it might be. And if it's something you, you thought about that you really want, okay, you'll, you'll fork over that $5 real easy. Oh, yeah, here here's $5. And... You, you're, and the incentive to doing this is not to be benevolent, but it's basically to hoping that you will win. And sometimes uh, they, they uh, have food prepared. I mean, they might fix up a barbecue plate for a, for a fundraiser. A lot of, a lot of uh, government agencies, uh, fire departments do this. They have fish fries and they have barbecues and stuff like that. And we'll, um, we'll charge you like $5 a plate or $10 a plate. And, of course, you feel good. You're getting a meal out of it. And the fire department is getting a few dollars out of it. So you think that's a win-win situation. And so, yeah, I, I, I know it's probably years ago that people saw, all of a sudden, they just didn't give charitable donations. They were trying to get something for themselves. And so that's the idea of what's in it for me. You know, you need money to pay the hospital bill for your sick relative, but what's in it for me? And if you'll think and you'll realize this, that's pretty much the way society is now turned out. I mean, they're not going to do anything for anybody unless they can get something out of it. And that's the way most people are. Not all people, but most people. See, most people, every decision that is made almost always factors in self. Rather than looking to a bigger picture and ignoring basic Bible principles, most people think selfishly. And it seems that if someone cannot benefit from an activity, they usually ignore such activity. 
even if would even if it would benefit others and aren't we glad that we that not everyone is like this and that's true see selfishness is the bane of our society and think about this every sin that takes place occurs because selfishness is involved and I've offered this challenge before but I challenge anyone to come up with any sin that is not driven by selfish desires I mean let's face it you cannot name one I don't sin that is not motivated by selfishness even the sins of neglect are driven by the fact that the person just does not want to do anything about it and so I mean selfishness and so that's what it is see God has taught us in his word that we should not steal or take from others and he even went further and commanded that we should not covet what others have whether that be possessions property money family members it is a sin to covet anything of your neighbors and you look at your neighbors around of course they have the fancy cars they have this or that they may be in debt up to their eyeballs but they, they really don't show that and you want to keep up with them so what do you do you go into debt up to your eyeballs and, and so yeah you want you want to keep up with them and the problem is you haven't learned to appreciate what you do have and so we think about this every act of fornication is an act of selfishness our society is bought into the into every action of fornication as you can imagine as they can imagine as evil and wicked as they can imagine and they, they they're, they're treating it as normal and okay I mean even the uh, the fornication with animals and, and children I mean it's all normal and, and they're 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 enacting laws to say that's okay that there shouldn't be anything wrong with that and so every bit of this activity is done by choice you know it's like well I can't help it I'm that way yeah they can help it see each person chooses to get involved in their own activities and the activities they do it's done by choice there is no such thing as I can't help it even God tells us that it's all by choice <clears throat> and some problems that maybe we face in the church is the fact that most people are selfish and end up doing what they want to do whether God approves of it or not and sometimes their decisions are made based upon the physical desires or rather rather than the, the spiritual needs of these people and and so maybe a problem is the fact that many people really do not convert to Christ see they, they they've heard something and they thought they could get something out of it and so they went through the process and were baptized and of course the problems that they have in life and they want to make them better well yeah everybody wants to make their situation better now they believe that getting religion can fix their problems and yes the truth is that God can fix their problems but the problem is they're not willing to make the necessary changes in their life to realize any benefit so these people continue living the same way after their baptism as before their baptism and yet they expect everything to be better I mean it's it's not better and why is that well because they haven't put forth the effort and what do they do well if things aren't better they become frustrated and consider that these actions and going to church and stuff like that that's just wasted time on their part and that's why we lose a lot of people because truly they are not converted they basically were talked into doing these motions and so if these people were truly converted to Christ they would behave like the Apostle Paul wrote to the Colossians in chapter 3 you know of course focusing on the spiritual thoughts putting away the old self and the and the, the man full of sin and putting on the new man and filling it up with all the good qualities that we're supposed to have and so most people want the benefits of the new man but they're not willing to give up the old ways their old ways and that's not good see and according to the hebrews writer in chapter 10 26 the sacrifice of jesus no longer is available to them i mean that that's that's really a very strong passage 
when you think about it. You read that over and over, it's almost a scary passage because it got to tell you, if I continue to sin, knowing something is a sin, and I continue in that, then the blood of Jesus isn't going to be effective for me. I'm going to lose that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, take, the, take time to read Hebrews 10, 26, over and over if you can, and let your mind dwell on it, and see if that doesn't change your perspective on a lot of things. Now, I realize it's hard to change a life, uh, and, and if you are concerned for your soul, though, you will do what is necessary. I also realize that many people are in survival mode, and spiritual thoughts are not high on their priority list. Well, God never promised an easy life, and we should never tell people their life is going to get easier. Uh, I mean, in a way, it's how we view things. That's what makes it different for us. As Christians, we go through the same problems everybody else does. We have the same issues. We have the same dealing with the same type of people. But as Christians, we have learned to, number one, be content with what we have rather than looking to the neighbor and seeing what they've got and say, well, I want one too. I mean, we, and we, if we can't afford it, I mean, that can put us into a lot of problems. So, yeah, I mean, so spiritual thoughts may not be high on the priority list for a lot of people. And so uh, if we, we, we learn that if we follow God's commands, our life will be better. Doesn't mean we're going to have a mansion and a fancy car and uh, all sorts of possessions. But it does mean that as we view life, we realize God is in control and God is the Lord of my life. And there can't be that. There really can't. And so it doesn't mean that food's going to automatically show up on the table or that we find our wallets and purses bulging out with money. It means that we should have a new, different perspective of life and we should continue to grow in our spirituality so that we can be pleasing to God. And of course, we do this to receive the great final reward. So that's what's in it for me. Serving God has its benefits, and maybe not in this life, but in the life to come, there's definitely benefits to serving God. We want to encourage everybody to seek what God offers and do those things, and you, you might be be thinking about that you know even paul talked about the fact that this this life even though with the, it, it's with all its problems there is nothing in this life that compares to the life in heaven so think about those things uh like i say do something for god today share this message and um encourage others to not really be thinking so much about what it's in it for me as far as physical things what's in it for me from a spiritual perspective and when people can focus on jesus focus on what he offers the salvation i mean the finish line we're looking for is that home in heaven so when people can focus on that and start living the way god wants them to live our world is going to get better and, and so that that's what we can hope and pray for and so we need to pray for everybody and do those things so consider these thoughts. Uh, we're we're going to end our lesson now. Uh, you have a good and blessed day. Do something for God. And we will hopefully, Lord willing, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.